So yeah, the spice trade in Southeast Asia, but I'm focusing on just one European power and then one colony. So today I've chosen Portugal and this is the map. The, the map. So these are some spices commonly used in Portuguese cuisine. I won't read them because I have pictures for them, so we'll go through that. Uh, so there is there's cinnamon, there's vanilla, there's uh, lemon zest, orange zest, and yes, these can actually be used for spices. Uh, there's also aniseed, allspice, don't ask me what they are, I also don't know. But the one that we're going to be focusing on today are the cloves. So I'm gonna, these are Portuguese cuisines that involve cloves, I've only just given two. I'm not going to read that there, but it's marinated pork, so you can't have this, sadly. And then the second one is basically sausage. Uh, like if you heard of salami before, that also uses cloves and I really like eating that. Next are the short description and the usage preparation of cloves. Cloves are usually native in Indonesia and India. They're usually indigenous and they're grown there. And the plants itself are grown anywhere from 12 to 8 to 12 meters in height. The way you prepare them is be, you get like they, they bud like this, right? They have three colors. So at first when they're new and they're not grown yet, they're pale. Then they turn green, eventually red. And then that's when they're ready for you to pick and use. And usually the best way to prepare cloves used as spice is to use this pestle and mo this mortar to like, you know, sometimes you just bang it like that until it becomes powdery and such. But another way that you can use cloves in preparation of food is just to literally stick it into your food and the buds of it should protrude out of your food. Cloves location in SEA. I've mentioned already that they're indigenous to Indonesia and India, but they can be found in other parts of like everything like Sri Lanka and stuff, but we're talking about SEA, right? And they're usually found in North uh, Malacca Islands in Indonesia. So they're indigenous into this, er this whole area here. So they come from a, a tree called the evergreen tree that is native to the North Malacca Islands. So up here, not really down here, just the north northern part. So they're found in these islands that we call the Spice Islands because the, not only are cloves grown there, but a whole bunch of spices are grown there. And these Spice Islands are like Turinet, Tidor, I don't know how to pronounce it, but basically these up here, the very north, and then one bucken down there. Now, outside from the Spice Islands in the Malaku area, they're also grown in Java and Sulawesi, so these two. And then the islands we saw just now are actually located around uh, this part. So, how did Portugal colonize Indonesia in the first place? So you have to know that these European colonies, you know, like uh, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the British and all, they had really strong... Oh, well, okay, I'll get there, never mind. So they were searching for spices in 1511 when they first landed. They first landed around like 1509, 1511 in the Southeast Asian territory. And they were there for two reasons, which was to uh, spread the idea, ideas of Christianity as well as uh, find spices. So the first European to actually officially land in Indonesia was uh, the Portuguese and not the Dutch, who we know because like the Netherlands uh, eventually colonized Indonesia. But the, the Portuguese came first. So they mainly stayed on these islands. I don't have a map for those, but they stayed there until they defeated on 1511, they defeated the Javanese fleet and they took over Java down there, if you remember the map. Now, like I said, these European powers had really strong military forces as well as uh, naval forces. So they were really strong in that area. And if we were to compare the military force of these Europeans and the Southeast Asians, the Southeast Asians are really underdeveloped in their military and stuff. So they were re pretty easily taken over by the uh, Europeans. So when they came over to Indonesia, they set up trading ports, trading posts and trading ports and all these warehouses because of the fact that their military was strong enough to do these things. And so their navigation allowed them to take charge of the sea and expand Indonesia even further. So because their naval force was so strong, they had a really tight grip over the naval area around Indonesia, because it's an island, right? So they conquered cities and built fortresses. Like I said, there's, a, there's infrastructure there. Uh, and they also blocked the entrance to the Red Sea and the Gulf and diverting supplies via the Cape of Good Hope. So I'll break this down. Basically, what these guys did was that the, the, the islands are around like this part, right? So they blocked this strip here. They blocked this Gulf so that you could no longer get your sh ships and trade all the way up here, the Mediterranean, where you're basically connecting Asia and the European countries. So they blocked that trade off. And instead they were like, oh, if you traders want to come trade spices and trade other things, we'll give you an alternative. You can go via the Cape of Good Hope. So you can go all the way from down here. 
And so they were able to control, because they closed this part, they were able to control uh, the prices of spices and other trades. So that's why they were able to monopolize. That's, that's the meaning of monopolize, right? And when they cut this off, they also cut off Arab traders, because if you know, Portuguese are Catholic, they're Christian, and they don't really like these Arabs trying to spread uh, Islam everywhere in the country and wherever they're colonizing. So that's how they monopolized the spice trade in Indonesia. So yeah, we don't need this. And then eventually the Dutch took over. That's the, the thing. And these are just pictures of the Indonesians growing cash crops. They didn't only grow clothes. Clothes is just one of the things that they grew. And you know, their labor was very, they expended their labor a lot. Oops. Right, so how did clothes, how do clothes affect Indonesian culture and society now? So they are the largest producers of clove in the world. Like I said, they're only, in Southeast Asia, there's India and there's Indonesia, but around the world, there are only three top producers, which are these three countries here. And as you can see, Indonesia is leading by a lot. They're actually, they make up for around 71% of the whole clove production. And this is a fun fact, but 90% of the clove grown in Indonesia are used in Indonesia. Most Indonesians, we know Indonesians love to smoke. Tobacco is a really huge, that, a huge thing in the country. That's another cash crop. But back then, cloves was a huge part of the cigarettes called the kretek. So they're basically just clove cigarettes, and these Indonesians would use those cloves, put them into cigarettes, and then you would have clove cigarettes. Then it's just an industry, a whole industry now in modern days, and they're making a lot of economic benefits from selling tobacco using cloves in them. So that's how it affected their culture now, smoking everywhere. And local Indonesian cuisine using cloves, you have this rendang, which is actually also, it's Indonesian slash Malaysian. There's a lot of Malaysian influences as well, but it first originated in Indonesia. They use many spices, including cloves. Another one would be the soto ayam. Ayam is actually the Malaysian word meaning chicken. So these are also Indonesian slash Malaysian. Same thing with this one. This is also uh, chicken, because ayam, it's, it uses cloves. Pros and cons of the spice trade. So the pros are economic growth. Of course, you trade, you get money. There's just economic growth for the country. Establishment of trade networks because the Portuguese had to move from Asia to uh, the European places. So they had a, a whole trading network and you know the Indonesians reaped the benefit afterwards, I suppose. Infrastructure development. They built fortresses, built forts, and increased agricultural production because the, the more they needed to sell, the more they needed to produce. Cons are exploitation. Obviously, a lot of the benefits that were supposed to go to the Indonesians didn't. Conflict and violence, the local leaders were usually suppressed very violently by the Portuguese, so a lot of killing, a lot of wars that were pretty violent there. Disruption of local culture, because the Portuguese wanted to spread Christianity. We don't care about your culture, we're going to replace them with what we think everyone should be following, so Catholic. And then the mon monopoly was that the Portuguese just established monopolies over the whole thing. They took money, they controlled this, controlled that, and that's just the cons of the trade. That's it.